The purpose of this video is to walk you through the period and processes for financials in Microsoft Dynamics AX. This video will not be walking you through inventory closing or purchase order year-end closing processes. This video also will not be walking through you through the payment generation for vendor and customer payments. I will not actually be running any of the processes due to time constraints for the video, but I will navigate and open up the forms and talk about some of the functionality in the forms. So let's start out in accounts payable. The first thing that we want to make sure that is done at every period end is that any purchase orders that are received but not yet invoiced that should be invoiced have already been taken care of. So if you've already got the invoice in hand from the vendor, you might want to go through this uh, list page, the purchase orders received but not invoiced in accounts payable uh, so that you can make sure all the proper invoicing is recorded. Um, you also may want to go through all the purchase orders and take a look and make sure that anything that should have been confirmed um, has taken care of in case you are um, accounting for encumbrances. Then we want to go look at the vendor invoice list page and take a look at any pending vendor invoices. And again, these are vendor invoices that you've received that you have not posted. So you want to make sure that everything's okay on there and get them posted into the system before you move through the, the next steps for um, accounts payable period end. The other thing to take a look at in accounts payable is to go through all of your journals and make sure that you don't have any outstanding invoice journals, payment journals, promissory note journals uh, that need to get posted as well. After all of your uh, transactions have been posted into the system for accounts payable, you'll want to go ahead and run any foreign currency revaluation processes if you have um, foreign currency invoices out there. Um, there is a separate video around currency revaluation that uh, you should take a look at, and Managing Foreign Currency Transactions is the name of the the video and that one walks you through the steps of running a foreign currency revaluation process. After you've completed the currency exchange revaluation process, you'll want to generate any period end reports. And there could be other reports other than what I call out, but for sure under report status, you'll want to generate the vendor balance list and the vendor aging list as well to make sure everything is taken care of. Um, if this is at a year end, you may have to deal with some 1099 reporting if you're in the United States or any other uh, government reporting reports that need to be taken care of at a period end. Uh, once you're done with all of this, then what we'll want to do is go into General Ledger, Ledger, and select the Ledger calendar. Uh, find this period or this fiscal year and uh, open up to the, the period that you're, you're um, closing and go into the module access level and for vendor and purchasing you're going to want to set the access level to none. This will prevent any new transactions from coming into that period now that you've closed it. Accounts receivable is, is very similar to accounts payable. Again, we're going to want to go through, make sure all free text invoices or sales orders, sales invoices that have not been posted, that should be posted into that period, have already been posted. And then you'll want to go through the journals and make sure all the payment journals and bills of exchange journals also are posted that should be. One step that's different in accounts receivable that's not available in accounts payable is generating your interest notes and collection letters. So once all of your sales invoices have been posted, you'll want to come into accounts receivable periodic collections and you'll want to go ahead and, and generate your interest notes. You run your interest calculation and interest note processes 
and then generate any you know collection letters, generate the new collection letters, and then print and post the collection letters if you run that process. This will uh, get all of those um, end of year calculations that need to be done. After that is done, then we'll want to run the foreign currency revaluation. And again, there is a separate video around managing foreign currency transactions that you can listen to to talk through the foreign currency revaluation process. Some period end reports um, for customers or accounts receivable include the, the customer aging, the customer balance, and of course you'll probably want to generate the, the customer account statements if you, if you uh, send those to your customers. Once you're done with um, all of that period end activity and accounts receivable, you want to go back to general ledger, ledger, ledger calendar, and for the, the fiscal year and period that you're closing, you'll want to go to the module access level and for customer and sales order, that you'll want to set the access level to none to prevent any new posting going into that period. For cash and bank management, um, you'll want to first start off with generating some of the reports. So under report, uh, bank report statistics, there's a bank account balance report. Um, you can verify all your balances there. And then you'll want to run the bank account process. So we'll start with the bank account. And for every one of your um, bank accounts, you'll want to run the reconciliation uh, process for the account reconciliation process for that bank account based on your bank statement. Once all of your uh, reconciliation for your bank accounts is done, once again, go into general ledger, ledger, ledger calendar, and for the fiscal year and fiscal period, you're going to want to set the access level for bank to be none and that will prevent any new bank transactions from coming into that period. For fixed assets, we'll want to get all of the, the assets depreciated um, for that period. So you, you'll run the fixed asset journal. Um, go ahead and create one and then we'll go through in the lines. You can run all the depreciation proposals to calculate all the depreciation for that period. So you'd run a depreciation proposal and enter the, the two dates and any uh, other restrictions that you might need to enter for the depreciation. You'll also want to run it for the depreciation books if you are using those. Uh, once all your fixed assets have been uh, depreciated for the period, some of the reports that you might want to take a look at um, include looking at the, the basis maybe, um, there's, there's some movement reports as well um, under transactions and then under periodic we have our balances report. Uh, there is a, some external reports such as fixed asset note or fixed asset statements that you can generate. And then once again, back to general ledger, ledger, ledger calendar, and for the fiscal year and fiscal period that you're closing, you'll want to set the access level for fixed assets to none and this will prevent any new fixed asset posting to that period. And finally, general ledger. General ledger should be the last module that you close out after all other modules are closed. Some of the functionality that you'll need to do is um, sales tax payments, so under make sure all of those are set up and then under general ledger periodic um, sales tax payments you would generate the sales tax payments that need to be recorded um, and then if you allocate out balances at the end of a period you'll want to run that um, process allocation request process based on any of the allocation rules and go ahead and get those uh, processed through the system and posted. You'll want to go into the general journal and enter any adjustments for the period, especially if this is year-end. You may have 
um, some adjustments coming in from your auditor. Once all of your adjustments are posted, your tax payments are done, your allocations are done, you'll also want to do any foreign currency revaluation for your, your general ledger accounts that did not get done through the accounts payable and accounts receivable modules. Some reports that um, are of interest at the end of the period and for general ledger include the trial balance report and you should generate that before you do any fiscal year close for sure uh, to make sure everything is looking good. Um, at this point um, you can, uh, once all your adjustments are done, you can go back into the ledger and in the ledger period or the ledger calendar for that ledger period. I wouldn't um, set the access level yet to to none, but I would set it to maybe a user group, and in that user group you might just have your account manager or whoever is responsible for running um, any closing adjustments or fiscal year uh, processing that needs to take place so that uh, no new transactions come into the general ledger. At fiscal year, or even at the end of a, a period, we do have a process for closing sheets and these, this is where you would enter in adjustments to a closing period. Microsoft Dynamics AX does support multiple closing periods so if you want to do adjustments for internal auditing auditors versus external auditor adjustments you can do that and then on your financial statement reporting you can include or not include those periods. So you would run the, the closing sheet adjustments to adjust into a closing period and then once that's all taken care of at fiscal year end we'd run the opening transactions process. And the opening transactions process is your year end close where it will take the balances of your P&L account or profit and loss accounts and move them to the account um, that you enter in here for the main account for transfer of year-end results, so typically a retained earnings account or some other equity account. Um, you would en enter the end date of the period um, fiscal year and then give it a voucher number. The financial dimensions tab will display all of the financial dimensions that you have in the system. Uh, for balance sheet transactions you can transfer the financial dimensions or not, so if you want to um, bring over the departments that you have on the all the financial uh, balance sheet transactions they will come over just in that level of detail or you can just have it roll up to just at the main account level. Profit and loss transactions because people typically uh, track more detail for profit and loss we've provided more options during this process. You can select for each um, financial dimension whether you want to close all which is bringing over at the detailed level at the transaction or um, if you don't want to close all you can choose a specific one to roll it up to. If you don't mark any of them then it won't it will not roll up at that level. And once you've done with uh, your year-end closing um, at, at this point you you may want to um, generate all your financial statements and uh, make sure they're all uh, looking perfect and uh, as you would expect. And then you at this point may want to go into Ledger, Ledger Calendar and uh, for that period that you've just um, closed, this at this point you may want to uh, stop the period. So let me expand that out, expand the form. There's a period status and at this you may want to mark the period as on hold or closed. Remember closed, you cannot reopen that period so if you need to go back and do adjustments you cannot reopen it if you've closed it. On hold uh, prevents any new postings into that period. And that includes the high level uh, overview of period and financials. Thank you.